Okay, I have an amazing card effect to share with you today. And it uses old and new principles that I'll point out a little bit later during the tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, eight random red cards of different values in suits, hearts and diamonds. And I have eight random black cards, number cards and face cards mixed in. And so if you were here, I would have you tell me how to randomly stack these. You want the red on top of the black? That would be fine. Okay, so we need to mix these cards because obviously uh, they're in a blocks of red and black, right? Okay, so we'll do some mixing. Should I stack from left to right or right to left to right? Okay, that's fine. Okay, if you've heard of leapfrog stacking, uh, we can do that, which is kind of a fun one actually. Okay. Uh, would you like to see that from right to left? Okay, so this one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. Random stack here. You want left on right? Um, let's see, why don't we also deal out in it? And I'm going to show you the cards, actually, as we mix these. Uh, because I, I need to convince you of, you know, how well mixed they are. Okay, now they're probably not super well mixed yet because they were in blocks of red and black. Okay, um, it's actually not too bad if you look at that. Okay, uh, but let's mix further. Okay, have you heard of an up jog? Sorry, I'm going to get rid of a little piece of thing on the pad there. Uh, an up jog. Uh, this is an even up jog. This is where you jog forward the even position cards. You strip them out and then you randomly stack according to your request. You want right on left? Okay. And a note to you as the performer, uh, you can do many more mixing procedures. In fact, anything that you can do to a quote, quasi Bessie sequence of order 16, you can do to this packet and won't hurt it. Okay, and now we're going to do something that I've never done before in this setting. Okay, so I've dealt out from left to right. And so normally we just do left to right and just build up layers. I'm going to give you the option. Now we can go from right to left or left to right. Your choice. Right to left. Okay. What about now? Left to right, right to left. Right to left again. That's fine. Your choice. What about the final one? Left to right. Okay. Very good. How would you like these stacked? Just left to right. No leapfrog. Okay. Why don't we do uh, just one more of those? Okay, so I'll do a lot into four. Which direction should I go? Left to right again. Now what? Right to left. Left to right. Okay, very good. Um, now how would you like these stacked? Right to left, leapfrog. Okay, so you kind of like the leapfrog stacking. It's kind of a fun one to do. Leaps over its neighbor and then random stacking here. You want right on left? Okay. Now let me just show you that the co the colors are really well mixed here. Okay. So look at these. And one thing I want to point out to you, don't, you know, necessarily do this for the spectator, but look at the colors. So these cards truly are mixed extremely well. Would you like to deal out into two piles or four? We can even deal out into eight piles. You want to do that? Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll do eight piles. It's a lot of work. Am I going to, oh shoot, I'm almost going off the camera view. I apologize for that. I keep doing it on this makeshift pad here. Um, should we stack the bottom row on top of the top or vice versa? Bottom on top. Okay, very good. How would you like to stack these? Left to right, right to left, or leapfrog? Leapfrog from left to right. Okay, I don't think we've done that one yet. How would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay, wow, very, very good. I can even show you one final time what the cards look like, okay? Okay, so you're okay with mixing? You wanna do into two piles one more time? Sure, okay. Two piles, one last time here, very good. How would you like them stacked? Left on right. Okay, so should we take a final look at this uh, complete mess here? Can you see all of them? 
that's a pretty messy mixture of red and black cards. Okay, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to give you a choice here. We can deal into four piles for the final time, left to right or right to left, or we can deal down one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, in whatever order you like. Do you want me to just deal down? So one, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay, wow. So where has that brought us? I'm going to move these down here and try not to go off of camera view. And I almost did right there. And then we're going to create pairs. So I'm going to Klondike shuffle a pair there and then a pair here. And then Kl Klondike is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. Uh, there's only two cards remaining. Okay, so, um, so Klondike pairs, and we've done this before. It's kind of a useful way to create, or a fun way to create pairs. Oh, and now, of course, I, as you probably have guessed, I have a, a written prediction off to the side. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what that prediction uh, says here. Okay, so what does that prediction say? You'll separate the reds from the blacks. Hmm. Red. You'll separate the reds from the blacks? Uh, nope. What's going on here? Uh, okay, what, what is going on here? You'll separate the reds from the blacks. Well, we certainly didn't do that. Uh, we did create pairs of opposite color, which is kind of fun, but that's not what my prediction was. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think there's more to it. Just kidding. What do you mean just... You'll separate the face cards from the number cards. There's no way we've done that. Wait, oh, wait a second. Face cards, face cards, face cards face cards. The rest are pairs consisting of number cards. How in the world did we accomplish that despite all of this crazy mixing with, with many random choices being made by you, the spectator? Wow. Okay, so uh, what is new? Normally we do left, right dealing consistently until we build up a pile. Uh, here I gave you this kind of serpentine dealing, which I've never done before when working with Bessie sequences. And even beyond that, we gave you kind of a random serpentine deal where you can deal out from left to right, then right to left, then right to left again, and then left to right. So you can deal out from left to right or right to left for each and every level of those four card piles. Okay, so we've just given the spectator so many more free choices. Okay, so how is this done? Um, so let me just show you um, what what I built. Now, I am kind of wondering, uh, just a note to you, the performer, if I were to do it again, I may not show the state of the cards within the mixing process. And it's not because they're going to see the organization that we have in mind. But sometimes you'll get these red herrings, and we kind of got one, I think, where the organization just happened to be such that it gave the impression that the cards were arranged red-black as a quasi Bessie sequence, when it wasn't actually. Okay, So just in the random mixing of these things, you might have patterns emerge that might give the spectator the mistaken belief that, oh, I can see what he's done. He's done such and such. When in fact, that's not even the method being used in that way. Okay, So it's nice to not even give a spectator a false reason for accomplishing what you did. Okay, so it, it might be best to not show those. So when you go to do it, maybe you don't display those. And as I'll point out right now, they're not going to see the organization of the cards that you have in mind. 
but they might see an organization of the cards that will lead them to believe, oh, okay, that's how he did this, and it's not the case, okay? So you just don't want to give them any false solutions to the effect because it just takes away from the effect. Okay, so uh, I would recommend that you not show the faces of the cards as you're mixing them, okay? Um, okay, so how, so how was this done? Uh, this is so different from anything I have shown on my channel. It really is. And I was very excited when I thought to do it this way. Okay, so I don't know if you just noticed what I did there. I just created a, a Bessie sequence of order eight relative to uh, face cards and number cards. So you have face card, two number cards, face card, and then a number card, two face cards, and a number card, okay? So that is a Bessie sequence of order eight, okay? And now what we need to do is we need to create a Bessie sequence of order eight relative to face cards and number cards, but have that sequence go in opposite order, okay? So I'll, I'll explain what that is, okay? So this isn't too hard uh, to do, actually. Okay, very good. There we go. Okay, so we have face, number, number, face, number, face, face, number. Now you go, instead of, like if you want to read it, you know, from left to right, we start with a face card at the top. Now we're going to begin with a number card and then continue that pattern. So number card, two face cards, a number card, then a face card, two number cards, and a face card. Okay. So when you randomly stack these, they give you what's called a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. And I can add links in the description below to Bessie sequences and quasi Bessie sequences. Well, the reason we want this is because it's unharmed by dozens upon dozens of ways of mixing cards and it won't harm the organization. But it certainly gives the impression that, boy, the cards really should be beyond the knowledge of anyone. And that's actually true. No one would really know unless somehow they were tracking all 16 cards as they're moving around. They wouldn't know where specific cards are or where cards are in relation to others, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is all set up that if I just stack this pile on top of that one or vice versa, it's going to be a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. And so if you go to that playlist, you'll quickly discover that there's just many, many common mixing procedures you can use that give the spectator a lot of free choices as to how things are done without undermining the fundamental structure here. So the, the key is we have secretly, unknown to the spectator, they're probably going to, you know, the more astute viewer, are probably going to assume that we're going to separate the reds from the blacks, right? I mean, because that's kind of how we started. And, I, and then I, you know, I showed you how well mixed they are. Okay. Well, in the end, that actually isn't the goal. We're going to separate the face cards from the number cards. Okay. So we dealt that into four piles. So what this will do is it'll begin to actually mix the colors, but it's going to preserve the quasi Bessie sequence relative to uh, face cards and number cards uh, that were set up at the very beginning, unknown to the spectator as they look at those cards. So maybe we can do a leapfrog from here to here. You can do an up jog. You can do a pharaoh. You can just do into two piles. And then let me just emphasize what's new here. You can do not only a serpentine deal. Okay, let me show you what a serpentine deal is. Serpentine deal is when you go like one, two, three, four, and now you start over but go in reverse. Kind of like a snake would snake around, right? A serpent would kind of snake around. Um, so now we go this way, now we go this way, okay? So you're just going back and forth, back and forth. That's called the serpentine deal. Well, it ends up that that doesn't harm uh, Bessie sequences or quasi Bessie sequences in the way that we're um, uh, using it here. Sorry, I just had a, I just had a six pop out uh, and I've got to figure out where he popped out. Looks like he popped out right there <laughs> okay so it'll be back okay 
Um, oh, but in addition to the serpentine deal, this is the twist that has never been done before on my channel. So not only can you do this, like go left to right, then right to left, left to right, kind of in a systematic, consistent way, you can actually give the spectator the choice. Should we go left to right again or right to left? Maybe they'll say left to right again. No, maybe they'll want to go right to left and then left to right again, okay? So it's their choice at each level. Okay, and then maybe we'll just stack from right to left, or you can do leapfrog and so forth. Okay, and then from there, uh, you can deal out into four piles, left to right, right to left, <laughs> like we were just talking about. Um, or you can deal down. Okay, that's the amazing thing. So with Bessie sequences, everything of importance happens in kind of sets of four. Okay, in fact, this final one here, you wouldn't have to deal it to the table. You could just drop the cards on top. Okay, uh, drop the cards as a fourth pile because it looks a little weird to deal to the table, that final one. Uh, there's no reason, to, there's no need to, okay? Now, what will be true here, if I haven't made a mistake, uh, these will all be what are called quasi bessie sequences of order four, okay? Relative to face cards and number cards. Man, I'm not making good use of this pad, am I? Looking like I'm all over the place. I just need to keep an eye on the camera. Okay, so what do you see here? Well, you'll see that the outer two cards are either both number cards and then the inner cards are face cards or vice versa. So we have face cards on the outer, number cards in the middle, number cards in the outer, face cards in the middle, and then face cards outside and then number cards in the middle. Well, just think about what's going to happen. When you Klondike shuffle a pair, it takes the top and bottom off as one. So we'll just do it face up so you can see it happening. Top and bottom off as one. Okay, so we just put the number cards together and the face cards together. Okay. And I actually like how this one turned out a little bit better actually because it really depends on the mixing along the way. Um, but do you see how this particular ending is going to be, you know, really nice for our missed call here? Because you bring out your prediction, say you'll separate the reds from the blacks. You go, well, those are black, those are red, those are black, that's good, uh, those are red. These others, one, two, three, four. <laughs> you did not, you failed. You failed as the performer. And that's what the spectator is going to think, right? And then you bring out your, just kidding. And the goal all along was to separate the face cards from the number cards. And that you have done perfectly. Face cards there, number cards here. Okay, well, now you know how to do it and how to set it up. And if you take a look at the series on uh, Bessie sequences and quasi Bessie sequences, um, you can learn a wider range of shuffles that you can do as convincers that won't harm the performance that you'll finish in the way that we did here. So anyway, this has two or three new elements to it that I was excited to share with you that you can now incorporate into your own card magic. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.